Pickle. It's Mailbag Friday, and it's brought to you by our good friends at the North Texas Honda Dealers. The North Texas Honda Dealers want to help you score some great deals on award-winning Honda. Stop by your helpful Honda dealer today or visit ntxhondadealers.com to learn more. So send us your questions, high school football, college football, recruiting, lifestyle, romance, travel, anything you got. If you want to complain about the NFL draft, you can. Uh, <laughs> go for it. Uh, let us know uh, on uh, on Facebook, on Twitch, on YouTube, or you can text us 972-532-6665. That's 972-5-DAMN-OK, 972-532-MONK. Or if you want to ask us now that we're barbecue experts, uh, we can we can field your barbecue yeah. questions as well. Uh, but please please know, I want to be very clear, we are experts at eating barbecue. Mm-hmm. We are not experts at making barbecue. So if you want some or advice judging. on how to— judging. That's if you, powers. If you, want to, if you want some advice on how to eat barbecue, I can help you there. So fire up, fire up, let us know your qu- uh, questions, uh, Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, and on the text line. Pickle? Um, Derek Del Rio asked, out of the first round, who's going to be a possible bust? I think you understand our feeling on the Cowboys. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, look, it, look, I think Micah Parsons is a super talented player. I just don't know that that is where I would spend my draft capital. That's just me. Right. First round pick that I think could be a bust. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. I mean, I have my I have my doubts about Mac Jones. Yep. Uh, I I I don't think that's a necessarily a real original take. Yeah. I think Mac Jones could be a pro. You know, could end up being uh, a guy that that just doesn't pan out. Trey Lance is really interesting. Yeah. Trey Lance could like I think he's, all, he's only. Th- Played like seventeen games in high school and college. So he's thrown like he's thrown four hundred and five yards. He's thrown four hundred passes. Yeah, in 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 high school and college combined, like four hundred passes. Now, I will say that I do think that they um, that when you take a look at, at, I think a lot of this is Josh Allen's fault. This is this has got big Josh Allen energy Mm -hmm. in the sense that um, a he's from that part of the world, right, and b. People are like, well, he doesn't have that experience, but we see the tools. Mm-hmm. If Josh Allen hadn't hadn't panned out, Trey Lance doesn't go third overall. Um, but there's no guarantee that that's going to work out. I think he he's got boomer bust potential um, there. You know, people. I do respect the 49ers for taking him over Mac Jones, though. Oh yeah, like I think you 110 percent. Also, I just wanted to watch the Bears trade their life away so bad, so yeah. we could make fun of Shahan, but it didn't end up happening. So they the, got a good pick. Look, the other things <laughs> about it is, yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, look, all the quarterbacks, maybe the exception of like Trevor Lawrence, who I think people are like could be like the one. Mm-hmm. Um, all of them are are you know you never know. The other one that I'm a little bit concerned about, um. And keep an eye on this, but the Raiders took Alex Leatherwood, the tackle out mm-hmm. of Alabama, and I it, can't believe they it, used their talk it, about using capital. Mm-hmm. Now they Ooh. need it. Now they need a tackle, but it's like that was. I don't think he was even the best tackle available. No, no. I would have taken all. the kid from Virginia Tech over him, but um, but that that's one that could come back to bite them. But there's a lot of the. I think there's a lot of uh, they're them banking on. It. He's an Alabama offensive lineman. He'll be pretty good. Um, those are the ones that immediately spring to mind um, that that could be end up being busts. And then the other mm-hmm. thing is, like, look, I love Devontae Smith. Mm-hmm. I think he's I think he's a superstar. Yeah, but he is small. Yep. And and does that play in the NFL? Like, we'll find out. Now he's going to Philadelphia where they're going to sling it around. I was but just to say, you got to have that. You transition into a. You need a Cole Beasley performance yeah. out of him. Like, you need to send him running the slot, or else it's, I don't see it happening on a wideout like that. I he's mean, not that's big enough. He's probably not the number one overall. Like, he's not the number He's not a number one guy. Mm-mm. But, you know, receivers, you know, the days of you got to be Megatron to be, like, a number one receiver, those are going away. Yeah. And, and let's remember I think he'll make a great that, slot receiver. Um, Deshaun Jackson – was a number one receiver for the Eagles for a long time, and he's smallish. Although I believe Devontae Smith is a little bit smaller. Um, I don't know. Uh, th- you never know. It's all a guessing game. We're all taking, you know, or you know, and you never know how these things are going to shake out. But those are the ones that immediately spring to mind. Aaron Flynn asked uh, for a mailbag. What is your favorite kind of panini? And I have a feeling he meant sandwich mm. version panini mm. <laughs> instead of. I um. I love the um the the little packs of cards that you get and you get to open them up. Those are my favorite kind of panini. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> um I haven't had a panini in a minute. 
I haven't either. My aunt had a panini maker and used to make them for us when we were kids or, like, let us put stuff on there. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. No. That's, that's, mm-mm. and yeah, panini, uh, a panini sandwich, let me be very clear. Let me be it's very specific here. It's basically just like a toasted. But a panini sandwich feels like a lot of work, like, unless you have a very specific kind of, um, like, you know. I just look at paninis, the sandwiches, as, like, I mean, the just cu- a toasted the cu- sandwich. The Cuban sandwich is elite, but it's like, you, you gotta know? have, like, the panini maker, and it's like, that takes up a lot of space. I don't know if that's necessarily what I'm doing. Yeah. I like panini America more than I like panini sandwiches. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. What is your favorite movie? All time? Yeah. Again, it's like you've got, like I can't I can't narrow I it think down you've, to one. I think you've got to balance out You need genre um, in my opinion. Well, you can either do genre or you can do like are you talking about like a movie that I think is exceptionally well made and like is just cinematic like, is cinematically wise. unbelievable. Yeah. Or are you talking about like a movie that I love sitting down and watching a million times? And the second one, the answer is easy. It's The Running Man. Okay. I love The Running Man. I think I it's <laughs> I think I think it's Arnold Schwarzenegger's best movie. Um, I think that it's got just so much goofy campiness. It is not a cinematic masterpiece, mm-hmm. but uh, The Running Man is great. And it's just like it's just such a great conceit. It's such a great idea, like a great concept. Uh, that movie is is great. You know what other movie is really good? What? Demolition Man. You ever seen Demolition I Man? I have not, no. Demolition Man, Sylvester Stallone, Wesley Snipes, takes place in the future. Um, it, it's like a super sanitized future, mm-hmm. and um, then Wesley Snipes is like this one guy who like nobody can handle him because he's like a gangster from like a bygone era, and so they have to unfree Sylvester Stallone to go and get him. It's a great world. Like it's really, <laughs> really fun. And Taco Bell's the only uh restaurant that exists in this world. So oh, that's well. something worth mentioning. That's nice. It's a f- it's a fun movie. It's a fun movie. I always like I've always loved Caddyshack. Mm-hmm. That's just one of those that yeah, you can throw it on and mm-hmm. whatever. Um I well here's another question I guess I can say this before I give this opinion. What are your thoughts on musicals? Overall I like them. Overall, I like them. Okay. Um, I don't know if I don't know if I will seek them out. Right. But like, if my wife is like, "Let's go watch Hamilton." Yeah. Or let's go watch um, this or that. I'm like, yeah, I like. I don't know. I'm still, I like talent. My wife made me watch uh, The Greatest Showman, and The Greatest Showman was really good. I liked it. I'm not. That's I've never thing. been a big musical fan, mm-hmm. really ever. Um, okay. Do you count like Disney movies as musicals? Because they're fundamentally musicals. Yeah. No, I don't. Okay. You are right though, but that's what I was gonna say is like like guilty pleasure movie Grease. I love Grease, always have, always will. Okay, we differ. Not a fan. Do you want me to go? Well, yeah. I think Grease sucks. Mm. I think Grease sucks. I think the music sucks. I think the acting sucks. I think all of it sucks. I think it's wonderful. I think it's. I think, I think it's, it's fantastic I, I, in every and I know, stretch I know I'm of pro- the way. I know I'm probably in the minority, but I think Grease sucks. Uh, I, maybe I just don't <laughs> get it. Maybe I'm too dumb to get it. That's entirely possible. I just don't get go. it. We'll roll with that one. Okay, that's fine. Do we have one more? Um, or are we done? We can go. Well, someone, <laughs> Tony Blaylock then asked, what's your favorite documentary movie? And you can't say Godzilla vs. Kong. Godzilla vs. Kong. Um, my favorite documentary movie. Oh! Ooh. Oh God, I don't know if I want to recommend it. Okay. But um, oh God, I I, I might have even mentioned this on um on a on a past show, but there is a documentary that I guess let me see where you can find it. Um, you can watch it on Tubi for free. I think it's on Amazon Prime as well. Um, it's called Dear Zachary: A Letter to a Son About His Father. You have. I did. I recommended this. Yeah, and I told okay? like I haven't watched it yet because I've. I just It's the <sighs> saddest movie of all time. I know, I just can't it's make the, myself it, it sit is down a, and do that. Yeah, I like you have to you have to be like I want to cry. If yeah. you need a good cry, uh watch Dear Zachary Cuz it's on to you sent it to me on YouTube, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh god. Oh god, it's it's the worst. It's the worst movie. But I uh, like the documentary is is like if you talk about movies that have stuck with me. Like I think about that every once in a while. I'm just like, ah, ah. Yes. Uh, Dear Zachary, a letter to oh. his son about his father. But I do like I, I like documentaries. I have become big documentary person. I like documentaries. I, 
Um, you know what I really liked? And this, I don't think, like you said, it wasn't like a cinematic masterpiece or anything, but something that I thought was so cool. Did you ever watch the Firefest documentaries? I did. I think I, I watched one of them. One of them. Okay. The reason I like that so much was because Netflix had one from the perspective of the people who, like, put on the mm-hmm. Fire Festival thing. And then Hulu, or well, one, it, it was reversed one of the way, I don't know. And then the other documentary was based on, like, the other people's perspective of it. So to sit there and be able to get both sides of the story in, like, a full feature documentary, that was awesome. What I'm worried about, though, I nerded is out. I do worry about the, do- the future of the documentary. Because I think that the documentary series is becoming the hotness, uh-huh. and everyone's like, "Oh, we got to make like a four. We got to do um, making making a murderer, or we've got to do um, Tiger King and uh-huh. stuff like that." And what ends up happening is a lot of these. Mm-hmm. It's like this could just be a ninety minute movie, and it would be good, right? Do you know what I mean? Yes. Like for example, this there's there's one on Netflix right now that I want to go watch uh, about that the art heist. Oh yeah, yeah. I've heard it's really good, but I've also heard people who are like, yeah, it's just too long, and I'm like, why can't you just shorten it and get it into like 140 minutes, right? And we can be done, or not 140 minutes, but an hour 40, yeah, 100 minutes, and be done, like. That's the thing I'm worried about that people are like, no, we got to do like a limited series and this and that. And it's like, because that's the new hotness. But mm-hmm. like a good sit down 90 minute story is is like sometimes you just want that. Yeah, I don't want to watch six everyone's, episodes. I was going to say everyone's breaking it into episodes, which and, and what it is go either way. But the pro- here's the thing. That's fine if you've got a lot. That's fine if yeah. you've got enough to fill There's it. no reason. Okay, I get what, what you're saying. What There's I no don't want stretch. is I don't want I don't want you to take a spoonful of peanut butter and spread it over four pieces of bread. Right. What I want you to do is just put that bad boy on one piece of bread and let me eat it. You know what I'm saying? Like there's just too much bread, not enough butter. Right. That's what I'm saying. That's what, yeah, uh, I really got and that's, it. That's like just spread too thin. And there have been a couple of documentaries. There was one called like Nightcrawler. It was about like a, it was about like a, a, a serial killer in, in LA in the eighties. And the whole time it's like, it's like, four or five hour long episodes and the whole time I'm thinking this needs to be 90 minutes. And I guess Move maybe this that's thing along. why I we don't need all the granular details. You just need to edit better. Maybe that's why I really like the fire festival one because that was some of the last one. Like that's one of the, that's a very recent one that's been put on Netflix that they or Hulu that they did well and didn't make it go way longer than it needed to. Exactly. Cause they could have broken that up, yeah. but they didn't, which was good. Mm-hmm. I think that's it. Yeah. Sounds good. Cool. It's going to do it for us.